Hello y'all and welcome to Young Folk Knits. Today I want to catch you up on some whip progress. I've also started something new. I've fixed something old and I've pulled out a languishing whip to try to get a little bit of progress done on it. So let's chat all about it. Hello y'all and welcome to Young Folk Knits. My name is Casey and if you're new here, this is a channel where I share all about my love of fiber arts. So there's a lot of knitting, but I also share about my love of sewing, spinning, sometimes things like crochet or whatever else I might be getting up to. And occasionally I will share about living on a small farm here in Arkansas with my husband, myself and our children. We are beekeepers. We love chickens and gardens and animals and spending time outdoors here in the foothills of the Ozarks. So if any of that sounds like it might be your cup of tea, make sure and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any new video content. Today I have a very knitting heavy episode. So on my last video, I shared about a lot of my long-standing languishing whips, and I'm pretty sure I stressed a lot of you out. <laughs> I do apologize for that. I often stress myself out. <laughs> I know I do have a lot of whips. I have started a lot of those and then had new commitments that I needed to prioritize and so since those were on no sort of timeline they got put on hold but the good thing is that I love all of them and I will definitely be finishing them. I'm planning on doing quite a few less test knits this year and I really hope that that's going to help me have more time for finishing up projects I've started. Also after that episode there were quite a few things that while I was going through it I was like, oh, I, I probably should frog this, but I don't know. I'm going to wait. Well, I ended up frogging those, and I have to tell you, I feel so much better. So, I frogged quite a few of them, and to make me feel better about it, I looked at different patterns that I thought, would I rather use this yarn for that pattern, or would I still prefer to use it for the pattern that it's currently being knitted up in. And if I even thought a little bit, yeah, I think I'd rather knit it in this new pattern, then I frogged it and that feels great, I have to say. <laughs> so I usually record my videos quite a few days in advance of whenever they go live. And we are still in January, but by the time this video is live, it will be February and that means that the I can buy myself flowers cow will have officially ended and I just want to say it has been so much fun. I personally have a deep love for all the pressed flowers patterns and I thought it was really exciting too that um, Amy Christoffers released a new pressed flowers pattern during the knit along. She just released a vest. So if you haven't seen it yet, you should check it out. It is super cute. I love the colors that she used for it. But I still want to focus on the cardigan. And I did not finish my project during the knit along, but I want to stress that that's okay. For this knit along, you didn't have to finish a project even to qualify for one of the prizes. It was more about just knitting on one of the pressed flowers patterns together because I think so many of us love them and wanted to knit them. And Ashley and I really enjoyed it. So I do want to share that there will be prizes from three different kind sponsors. My co-host Ashley from Design by So and So here on YouTube and Instagram 
we decided to do one prize, which was going to be a physical prize, and then one prize, which would be a digital prize. So the physical prize includes um, a gift from Beautiful Sister bags, which they make absolutely stunning, gorgeous bags. Y'all are going to love it. And also the stitch markers from Sable and Stone. So I will be sending that out to the to one of the winners. And then also we have a digital prize, which is going to be a $50 gift card from Curio Fiber. Thank you very much, Curio Fiber. And also Ashley from Design by So and So, who is a pattern designer herself, she is going to be adding. A digital gift of her pattern as well so we're super excited and it's not technically over yet so we can't pick the winners as of the day I'm recording this but they will be picked shortly but the winners will be announced on Instagram you can find me at youngfolk.nits on Instagram and Ashley is at design by so and so on Instagram okay so what have I been up to this week <laughs> All right, episode before last, my last podcast video, I shared about my finished Noro sweater test knit, which still, as far as I know, does not have a name yet, <laughs> but this lovely raglan oversized sweater is a pattern designed by Alicia Plummer, and she knit her sample in Noro silk garden worsted, I believe. It does have mohair in it, so I chose Noro Madara, which I think is maybe, they're both worsted weight gauge, but I think that this is slightly bigger. In fact, I think you could knit this at a bulky weight gauge easily, and I'm not so sure about the Noro Silk Garden, but anyway, this has a base of wool, alpaca, and silk, I believe, and it is a singles yarn, so it's really lovely, and it has these stunning and beautiful tweedy bits in all these different colors. I really, really love this yarn. So I shared on my last podcast that it was really long. It grew a lot with blocking, and I didn't realize it was going to grow as much as it did. And I couldn't decide what to do. While I did think it was cute, and I appreciated all of y'all who helped me with your input, most of you by far said that you liked it best long. And I, my whole thought process for this sweater was to make a big oversized comfy wrap up and granola girl hiking vibed sweater. So I did want to keep it long, but I felt like it was about two inches longer than I really wanted it to be. So what I ended up doing was a little bit of sweater surgery. So first of all, let me just tell you, it is still long. I kept it long, but what I ended up doing was right here at the bottom, I Pick, went through and picked up a row of stitches all the way around. And then I went through and picked up a row of stitches all the way around about two inches apart with two different needles. And I cut in between and pulled the yarn out. And then what I did was Kitchener stitch the two pieces back together. And that way I was able to cut out about two inches of the sweater without having to pick out my tubular bind off. Actually, I don't, I didn't really do a tubular bind off. I did a Italian bind off. So I'm going to link the Italian bind off method that I used again, because it's my absolute favorite for a two by two ribbed sewn bind off. There's no rearranging of the stitches and it always gives, gives a really lovely result. But I didn't want to unpick it in this yarn because once I blocked this, this yarn almost felted together. It's non-superwash and it's 
it became very sticky. It's a singles base. It's very loosely spun. And in fact, I had a lot of trouble even pulling my stitches out, which was frustrating. In the end though, this was a huge success. I don't feel like you can tell at all where I Kitchener stitched it. You could absolutely after I got done, but I blocked only the area around where I Kitchener stitched. So I just got water and I, I got a cup of water and I just poured it heavily over that area. I didn't want to block, re-block the rest of the sweater. I just wanted to sort of plump and fluff that yarn back up to match the rest of the sweater around it and it totally fixed it. I think it looks really, really nice. You can't tell. I'm very pleased with it. And I will show you some pictures of what it looks like now. I think it's a much better length for me. It's still long, it's very oversized, and it still is absolutely hitting on my vibes that I was looking for. So I'm, I'm really pleased with this sweater. I do wanna share a few things about the Nora Madaro yarn. So, finished project absolutely in love with it. It's so drapey. I wore it out in the cold and because I knit this at such a uh, airy gauge, it, it was not hot at all. In fact, I was almost cold just wearing this without a big coat over it. And that is something I'm going to keep in mind because I think this is going to be the perfect Arkansas fall sweater. And in fact, if I knit this at a nice airy gauge, I think this yarn would be great even for springtime. So I'm really, really impressed with that. It also has the silk content in it. So all of that helps with the breathability of the yarn. I also am impressed with the yardage that you get with 100 gram skein of this yarn and I think a lot of it is because it's a very light and lofty yarn so you do initially pay quite a bit for a skein of yarn but you're getting a lot of meterage out of it. I love the way it feels. I love the different tweedy neps in it. I think that makes it very special but one thing I did not like is that every single ball that I used had multiple knots in it. Now with this base I was able to spit splice so I just untied the knots and spit splice them together. If I come across a knot in a ball of yarn and I would recommend this to anyone watching never ever ever leave a knot in your yarn while you're knitting. Um, you're going to be very unhappy with it. It's going to be visible so don't ever do that. Untie your knot and either weave those two ends in or just like you're joining a new ball of yarn or do a different join of your preference. This yarn thankfully I could spit splice so I did that every time I came across a knot but I mean it's really irritating to come across multiple knots in every ball that you use. So I don't know if it was just the batch that I got or if it's that way with every skein of yarn that you would get in the Nora Madara, but I didn't want to mention that. I did not like that at all. Also, a lot of people talked about the fact that this yarn was easy to break, and I can definitely see how that is the case. I was personally able to do a sewn bind off on my sleeves and the ribbing on the hem of my sweater, and everything was fine. I think a great option with this yarn is to do it in smaller pieces because you can spit splice the yarn together. And if you've not heard of spit splicing, that is where if you're using an animal fiber yarn, so it doesn't work with processed superwash yarn very well. It won't work with plant fibers, but an animal fiber yarn such as wool, alpaca, things like that, you can spit splice it. So what you do is you take the two ends and if it's multiple plies, then I will take about an inch of the, of the end. I will separate the plies and remove an inch of half of it. And I do the same on the other end. Then you lay those two ends together and hence where the name comes from, they say spit works best. You can use water, I use spit. I usually just put the ends in my mouth, get them a little wet, 
and then you use the friction between your hands to really rub those two ends together and what you're doing is felting them into one piece then you can pull on them they won't go anywhere they've become one strand of yarn so thankfully you can do that and whenever doing a sewn bind off in this yarn i think it's a great option to use smaller pieces and when you're ready to lengthen it again add another piece and spit splice it to the old one so that's a great alternative i did not have any issues with the yarn breaking but i think a lot of that has to do with the fact that i'm a very loose knitter i the way i tension my yarn i don't like there to be hardly any tension at all or any pulling on the yarn i like it to be very nice and loose and slack and that is part of why I'm such a loose knitter, but it also absolutely helps to keep the yarn from breaking whenever I am knitting with it. So I am very, very happy with my finished and modified sweater. I love it and I am very much wanting to knit more out of this. In fact, now that I have a long sweater in this, I think I would really like to have I almost wish I could have this identical sweater, but in a cropped version that I could French tuck, maybe with a drop shoulder. I don't know. I'm keeping it in mind because I love it. All right, so I fixed that sweater and what I have 100% been focusing most of my time on is finishing my test knit for Andrea Mowry. And it is a garment and it is a slow moving garment and there's a lot of yarn management, I will say. It's beautiful, I'm obsessed, I love it. I love my colors so much, and I think I'm gonna absolutely love the finished product. But I am telling you what, it's taken a lot of knitting and I'm not done. <laughs> and it's due in like a week, so I've got to continue to focus big time on that that test knit and the good thing is that it's going to be released in like a week and a half so y'all will be able to see exactly what it is and I'm sure that Andrea Mowry will probably start showing sneak peeks on her Instagram before too long I would not be surprised if very shortly she starts showing some sneak peeks so another thing I did was when going through my whips I decided to get out something that I had been working on but has been languishing for a few weeks and whenever I am going somewhere where I know I'm going to have maybe like a few minutes so I'm in the car and I'm going to be in line at the pharmacy. I always like to have some knitting with me but probably not this test knit that I'm doing. It's not really something that with the yarn management is easy to just you know pick up a knit and then put it back down. So instead, I got my Sacred Sheep hat, which is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter from Boyland Knitworks. And I've been working on that quite a bit here and there for like two minutes at a time. <laughs> so I haven't made a ton of progress, but that's okay. I really like the fact that it's a worsted weight knit. So my small bits of progress actually show some progress. So I'm doing the single fold and I actually knit the single fold a little bit longer than it said to because I am a lover of a taller brim <laughs> for a hat. So I'm using the Ritual Dyes Elder. I believe it's just I got the kit for the hat that she originally did it in because I loved it so much. And this is the color Jewel Weed. And then this is the color Bone, I believe, and Obsidian. The black is Obsidian and the sort of grayish color is Bone. So it makes this really fun all over color work motif on the brim of the hat. And I really prefer knitting color work two-handed. So I will hold my dominant color or my contrast color in my left hand and then I'll hold my background color or my main color in my right hand. And that seems to work really well for me. So um, um, I end up 
flicking with my right hand and picking with my left hand and I get a pretty good tension doing that. I think my floats look pretty good. And this is going to be a super comfy warm hat. But I was inspired by a few different people and a few of your comments and I was watching Marlene Knits and she was talking about how one day a week she's working on some whips, one day a week she's working on her uh, scrappy projects. And so I at least want to devote one day a week to working on some of my whips so that I can continue to make progress and get some of those finished up. I love them too much for them to not ever be finished. So this has been a good project. It's very small and portable that I can take in the car with me. I don't really have any socks. I mean, I do have some socks that I could pick up and work on, but instead I'm doing, I'm doing a hat. And this is my sort of small project that I take with me when I'm out to the doctor or going to be in line waiting somewhere or driving somewhere in the car and I may have five minutes to knit it on. It's perfect to pick it up and put it back down. Um, now I have got to the color work part and I'm not on the ribbing. I may have to give it a little bit more attention, so we'll see. But I can finish the rest of that hat in a day easy. It's worsted weight. I only have the crown left. So I may even just try to finish that up and feel like I've got a win <laughs> from a finished object and a finished whip. The other whip that I have been focusing on is my shawl, my pressed flower shawl. And I'm just still continuing to finish that last repeat. I think I could do it in a couple days and then I would just have the border left. But as I said, I'm really trying hard to focus heavy on my test knit because it is a commitment that I have. February 5th begins the Wooly Knit and Young Folk Knits Wool Along. And this is a make along, so it is knit, crochet, whatever kind of fiber arts you do with a wool is welcome. And the way this is going to work is that you can use any wool yarn to work on a project during the month of February. So it's February 5th through March the 4th. So to participate in this make along, all you need to do is during that time period, post a whip on Instagram using a wool yarn of your choice. It does not have to be wooly knit yarn. It can be any wool yarn and use the hashtag YKXYFK. So wooly knit and young folk knits. So during that time period, wooly knit is releasing their brand new DK Merino cones. They are so soft. The color on them is absolutely beautiful. And I think DK is such a popular weight that we've probably all been waiting for the DK versions of these cones. I'm so excited. This is the Cosecha Gold. And nope, what is this? This is a color chestnut, I believe. So you will be able to receive 20% off on this new release of their DK Merino cones, as well as their British wool cones and tanks. So I'm going to put that code back in the description here whenever it becomes active. It won't become active until February 5th. And at that point you can use it through March the 4th. So to participate in this make along, you only need to post a picture of a whip that you are working on in wool yarn. It can be any wool yarn of your choice. And by doing that, you'll be eligible to win a 75 pound gift card from Wooling It. So I'm super excited. Also, if you have been interested in trying Wooling It, then it is a great time to get 20% off. I absolutely love their Merino yarn, but I love their British wool too. Um, I'm very pleasantly surprised by the fact that this is very wooly feeling, but I can absolutely wear it against my skin. So I am going to be knitting the Heirloom Quilt Cardigan by Katrin Seaburger. This has been a pattern that I have been dying to make since way before she released it. In fact, I wanted to test it, but I ended up having a few other 
commitments at the time and I could not do it. But I, I'm in love with it. I have loved it ever since she started teasing it. And everybody's versions I've been seeing, especially Mia from Knit and Grace, she just really pushed me over the edge. I'm like, okay, I've got to make it now. So that is my project that I'm going to be working on during the make along and I was super excited. Wooly Knit let me pick out a few different colors to try on their cones. So this is their 100% merino wool in the fingering base and it is the Musco color. It's a 500 gram cone. I mean, I think that's really amazing. You could get one cone of this yarn and knit an entire project with it. So I think that's a really great value. So I got a few different colors of the merino, but I also got quite a few small cones that they wound off for me of their British wool. And I have to tell you that the British wool fingering weight held double is an absolutely lovely, lovely fabric. This is the British wool fingering held double and I knit up a square for a swatch to determine my size that I was going to be knitting in this pattern. And I also knit up a square of the DK weight yarn held single. The both colors here are the DK weight yarn. And I was able to match gauge. So that means that I'm going to be able to sort of mix and match my colors and my fibers here, the British wool and the DK, to get all the different squares that I want to. Now, I did the chart for the size two squares, and my gauge is bigger than the size two. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and knit the size two squares, but I am going to have to maybe adjust it to change the amount of squares that I do to create the pattern. I think I could probably do one less square around. And this pattern, I would say, is not for a beginner knitter. It is more of a recipe. And I really feel like you need to have a little bit of color work under your belt before you knit it because not only are you knitting stranded color work, but you're also incorporating intarsia technique in part of it. And you are knitting color work flat, so you're gonna be purling as well. That is not difficult to me. I feel like it's pretty much the same as knitting color work in the round. Um, but if you've never done it before, it could be very confusing. So I would say this is not something for your first color work project. So I'm knitting my squares on a US 7, I believe. Four and a half millimeter. And it takes me a whole afternoon to knit a square right now. I, in fact, I thought it might be interesting if today I sat down and time myself as to how long it takes me to get through a whole square. So I've done two squares and these are the two squares I've done. So I think for my next one, I am going to do this light gray British wool held double and I was thinking about either doing a the contrast color in this blue which I used for this square or this cinnamon color which I used for this square as well so boy they look good together don't they they look so good together <laughs> So I'm going to do this for the main color, the background color, and then I'm going to do one of these for my contrast color. So I think I'm going to tie myself today and see exactly how long it takes me to knit one of these. I'm only going to time while I'm knitting, so I have to stop a lot. I've got children and dogs and responsibilities, but um, I'm going to keep a timer going while I'm doing the actual knitting, and that is my plan. So I've been trying really hard to focus on some of the yarn that I have that I need to use. I didn't buy yarn in January. I didn't buy yarn in December. 
I really, really wanted to buy yarn during the monochrome collection from Explore Knits and Fibers, but I had the yarn in my cart and it ended up closing in like 30, 45 minutes and I did not get, when I went to check out, it was gone. <laughs> so thank goodness I missed that and that kept me still from not buying yarn in January. But I do wanna show you one thing in acquisitions and this is something I bought right after Ron Beck and Woolen Folk. As soon as it was over, they put up a pre-order for Indian Tangled, which I did not attend and I sort of wish I would have this past year. But they had a 10 year bag that you could have received if you attended the Indian Tangled event. Um, I did not, as I said, so I decided to buy this bag in the pre-order and I think it is so cute. I love the green. I love the canvas. I love the illustration on it and I'm going to be keeping all of my squares and the yarn that I'm working on, not all the cones, but all the yarn that I've wound off into balls and I'm sort of pulling from, I'm gonna be keeping that in this bag while I'm working on the heirloom quilt cardigan. And I don't know when I'll finish this, but I think at the least it's nice if I could do one square a day. I don't know, I really need to finish my test knit. It's hard for me to think about anything until I can finish that. But it's nice if I could finish one square in the early part of the day and then at night, whenever I get everybody in bed, I usually, that's when I have some time. I try to stay up a little bit later, which is probably why I'm exhausted all the time. <laughs> but I try to stay up a little bit after the kids are in bed so that I can have a little bit of time to sort of relax and wind down. And my husband and I, we drink tea together and I usually knit for a couple of hours. So that is my dedicated test knit time. But if I think I'm doing all right, if I think I can finish, then I might try to spend the morning of some of those days working on a square. Then when I finish that, I can devote my time to this fully. Okay, let me look and see how many squares I'm supposed to knit. So size two says that you need to knit 27 blocks. And I, I, like I said, the size two block is supposed to be five inches wide and four and a half inches long. My block is like seven inches wide. So I'm going to cut one of those squares out on all the way down probably out of the back so i probably need to make 25 squares plain on 25 squares 20 24 squares 23 squares and what i'll do at that point is lay them out arrange them sew them together and if i think that that fits great if i think i need to add another column I will. It's definitely a very oversized fit. And Katrin did two different color sleeves, so each sleeve was a different color, but my plan is to do each sleeve the same color. We'll see when I get there though. If I did one square a day, it would take me about 23 days to have them all knit up. Let's see how long it actually takes me. <laughs>
Hey y'all, I have just finished my quilt swear and it took me one hour, 10 minutes and 59 seconds. <laughs> so about an hour and 11 minutes. And I will say that when I do these, I like to sit down and do it all at once. And if I have about an hour, then I can usually do it within that hour. But I was interrupted so many times today when I was working on this, I had to start and stop a lot and I had a few people come to my house right in the middle of it. So this ended up being an all day thing and it, I think that starting and stopping, looking at the chart, figuring out where I was, untangling my yarn, all of that took it a little bit longer, but this still takes me a good hour to make. And I'm hoping by the end of this, I can make it a lot faster. Um, I think at that point, I'll never even have to reference the chart. I mainly just want to look to make sure that I am on the right stitch when I start the contrast color. And that's why I have been looking at the chart. But also, I am doing ladder back jacquard on the back. And I'm doing some yarn wraps on these sections where I have a straight line on all of those straight lines between the two colors. I'm doing intarsia yarn wraps to make sure that it doesn't separate from each other. So I'm going to block this and I will then have three completed squares for my cardigan and I really really love this oatmeal color with the rusty cinnamon color oh, I think it's so good anyway these aren't quite as bad as I thought they were gonna be with color work knitting flat <laughs> with the purling it's really no big deal at all uh, the only thing that takes a little bit longer is that I'm having to wrap my yarn like the intarsia knitting so if i wasn't doing that i think i could knit it up in probably 10 minutes less so maybe 50 minutes <laughs> we'll see how long it takes me to knit a square at the end maybe i'll get it down to 30 minutes doubtful Right, y'all there you have it I'm gonna continue working on my projects and I hope that you're enjoying working on your projects as well let me know in the comments what y'all are up to thank y'all so much for hanging out with me today I really appreciate each and every one of you if you enjoy videos like this give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button it definitely helps my channel out and it ensures you won't miss out on any future content. I also appreciate all of your comments. I love reading about what you're up to, so let me know what project you're working on or what future plans you have. And until next time, happy knitting, y'all.